Hello everyone. Welcome back to Maxim Automation. Today I'm going to start a new tutorial series for creating a framework using page object model. Where we'll see how to create a framework using page object model and how we can integrate different components in the same framework. So today to start with, I'll first discuss what a page object model is. Page object models simplify these objects within the test code. This reduces the amount of duplicated code and means that if UI changes, then the fix only need to be applied at a single place. Page object model is a design pattern which is very popular among the community while creating the automation framework. Using it can reduce the duplication of code and at the same time, test maintenance also becomes easy. A page object is a class that stores all the elements of a web page. So for each web page of your application, there will be a corresponding class which will hold all the page locators. For example, let's say if you have three web pages in your application. First one is the login page, home page, and the payment page. Then according to the page object model, you have to create a corresponding class for each web page. It means for login page, you need to create a class called login.cs and similarly for home page and payment page you need to create a separate class as home.cs for home page and payment.cs class for payment page so whatever number of web pages you have you need to create those number of page classes to store the elements of that page let's say if we have username password and submit button at the login page then the locator value to identify these web elements will be stored in a login.cs file and in these classes we'll create objects as class variable which will store the locator value and for multiple elements we'll have multiple class variables holding the locator value of the page elements here by the term locator value i mean the value to identify the object on a web page. So these values can be XPath, ID, name, or any other Selenium locator value. And apart from these class variables, this page object class can contain the methods for page operations. For example, for login page, we can create a method for login, which will input the username, password, and then we'll click on the submit button. So whenever I need to log in into the application, I can call this class method to perform the login operation. And if any locator value changes in future for any of the web elements, then we only need to modify it at a single place. And this way, we don't need to change the test. Now, when we talk about test, then we have different layers where we create the test classes, where we'll contain our tests. So we can group the test based on the feature or functionality. For example, I can group all my login related test cases in login test.cs file. And for profile related test in profile test.cs file. So these test classes will use the methods of page object class to interact with the UI of that page. So it's totally up to you how you group your test cases in a class file. In case of test classes, we don't need to keep one to one mapping for page objects and their test class. Because test cases related to profiles also need to access the login methods from login.cs file. Without doing login, we cannot test the profile related scenarios. So, this way, many test methods will use the login method of login page.cs class. And if there is any change in the login method, then we don't need to change it in every test method. So this is the advantage of using the page object model, where we have a single repository for all the objects offered by a page, rather than creating objects inside the test itself. So if we use objects directly inside the test methods, and if the UI changes in future, then we need to go to each test and update the objects and methods at every places. But if we use page object model, 
then we need to update the changes only at a single place which results in better maintainability of the framework so this is the overview of the page object model and after that we have another important concept of page factory now what is page factory page factory is a class provided by selenium to support the page object model implementation using page factory we can easily declare the page elements and the same elements can be initialized by itself when we call the page factory init elements method so first let's see how we used to create the page elements or locator before using the page factory for example let's say if we have two elements in a login page then to create those elements we used to write the class variables by using the by object and then we initialize the by object by using the different locators like xpath id or name and the locator value and then we use these objects in a page methods to find the elements over a web page before performing an operation so this is how we used to create page elements without using the page factory but now with the use of page factory class the initialization of web elements got simplified let's take this example here i have declared the elements using page factory so page factory provides an attribute or a notation to declare and locate the web elements over a web page now we don't need to create the by object using the page factory we have to create the object of web elements and then those elements are associated with find by attribute this find by attribute takes two arguments one is the locator type and the other is locator value here locator type needs to be provided against how and locator value needs to be provided against using and when we call page factory dot init elements then this method will initialize all the web elements which are available in the class these elements are searched over a web page when we use these elements in our page methods let's say if this username element is used four times in this class methods then it will find the element four times over the web page before performing the operation but if you want that it should not find the element again and again and it is already found in the previous step then the page factory provides cache lookup annotation to cache the element so that if the same element is used in the next step then it won't search for the element again over a web page it will read the elements from the cache if you think there won't be any change to your element then you can use the cache attribute for the same but if the element changes or it becomes stale after page refresh and so then please don't use cache attributes with those elements because in that case you will get the exception so that's all about the page object model in my next session we'll see how to create a framework from the scratch based on page object model i hope you like this video please put your comments in the comment box also please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel thank you